welcome to my rock store. I'd like to uh, show you some of the new lava samples that arrived today. And um, they are from the ongoing Iceland eruption. And I must say thank you to Edgar and Alina for collecting the rocks and posting them to me. And uh, now we have quite a few large chunks to work with. So have a little look here. And uh, maybe the first sample I'd like to start with is this one here. It's quite dense, although it has a lot of bubbles, but uh, it is a heavy specimen. And here in the interior you can see some large gas vox and some, um, well, clearly a molten material, a formerly molten material. The outside is a bit spiny, but um, it's relatively dense while there is bubbles. They're not as... Um, um, abundance in some of the other samples. Another interesting point here is that there's some rock fragments in here like uh, this one for example. So we have some feldspar rich rock that occurs in there as tiny fragments. I assume they're gabroic in the wider kind of sense. And uh, here's another one, quite large actually. So this is something we're going to focus on to get out and analyze and uh, this will tell us something about what's actually going on under the volcano. So, and uh, then I uh, like to kind of bring you over to this sample here. This is quite lovely. It's very glassy here on the outside, so you can see the flow textures on the outside. And uh, this is a bit more bubbly, it's a lot lighter. And uh, here you can see the gas vox going in there. And uh, here is still a bit of kind of the droplet type uh, um, uh, shape of the former lava. Some of the colors are quite magnificent, kind of silvery and partly bluish. So this is small scale oxidation at the surface. And here is uh, some of the interior of this. So you can clearly see the outer crust here. And that was inside. While this was starting to cool, this was still liquid and frothing away most probably. So, over here we have a more AA type or like sample and it seems less bubbly, although there are some gas vox as well, but this is a lot more massive and it's also a, a lot more dense, you can really feel it, although there is some gas vox in here. And uh, this is a bit more spiny, so one has to be a little bit more careful. It seems more like clinkery material that, that was baked together while material was flowing, partly already solidified. And um, it's a bit of a different textural phase. She's probably forming in a somewhat cooler state than the previous sample. So down here we have a more vesicular sample. This is more bubbly and um, it's not quite as dense and it's quite rich in uh, crystals. So it seems that it has a bit more plagioclase crystals and uh, you can kind of see it here as well. There is white specks in there, that's the plagioclase. So we will focus on some of them. And if you look here, for example, there is a nice kind of rock fragment and uh, up here as well. So that brings me on to this sample here. It's a bit similar to one of the clinkery AA type samples that I've shown before. And uh, it's quite spiny. It doesn't have a lot of obvious gas bubbles. It's quite massive. And uh, likely this was material that was partly solidified when it was welded together. Now the remaining samples all have glassy crusts. So let's start with this one. Here is a glassy crust, a Pahoy type crust, and you see some alignment here. So this was flowing this way, the little flow lobe, and there is gas vox in the interior. So the interior was still uh, vesiculating while the upper part was already chilled and cool. And uh, here we have a lot of little white specks, a lot of plagioclase. Some of the Icelandic colleagues tell me that the lava seems to get more plagioclase rich, well, looking at this sample, certainly it seems to be more plage rich than the earlier sample that we received already a week ago. And uh, here we have a similar sample, beautiful pahoy hoy uh, texture with uh, alignment of glassy ropey streaks. And um, here we kind of have a very thin crust. 
and a bubbly interior. Now, these crusts, it's a bit like the skin on hot chocolate. So you actually kind of form this skin and then you have to compress it in order to make it ropey. And um, this um, is a beautiful texture that uh, forms as a result of it. And on the interior, you have loads of these uh, bubbles that uh, are forming kind of under the glassy crust. So uh, the degassing is continuing, even though the surface might already have hardened to a degree. So looking at this sample here, we see similar things. There is a glassy surface, maybe not as glossy as the previous one. And the interior is all bubbly with large uh, channels of uh, vesicles, sort of uh, degassing pathways. And that's what we see here as well. And here too. And the last sample I'd like to show you is uh, this one here, a lovely flow lobe. And uh, you see the glassy exterior and uh, it wraps around here and the more bubbly interior. And there seems to be some vesicle grading that kind of wraps around in the same way here, uh, around this rather more, well, less brownish area here in the middle. And there's uh, a number of white specks here again. Some of these are clearly felts, but others are rock fragments. And uh, there is some larger ones here as well. And uh, here's yet another one. And here's yet another one. And there's also some here on the surface. And uh, these are some things that we're trying to take out and analyze then. So this is a, a large flow lobe. It's pretty massive, although it has vesicles, so it's going to be a good sample to work with. Okay, I think um, that's a little introduction to the samples uh, we received today. I will cut them up tomorrow and we will start working with them. So this is the last time they will exist in this way. So this is why I was particularly keen to record this now. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you again very soon. All the best. Bye-bye.